Hey guys, today I'm going to have you think about what the environment's going to be like as you're taking the test. You know, I, I, I've used this resource for several years now, um, and it, it's got lots of information about you know, different things it takes to be a successful high school student. Um, but this was not something that, that I considered uh, in, until I got to college. I didn't think about when does my brain work best? How can I set myself up for success so that my brain can, can remember the most information? How can I maximize the potential of the gray matter that I have? So, you know, like, like I said, I didn't think about this until I got to college because, you know, Certainly in high school, I didn't, I didn't have an office or anything like that. I did most of my, my studying and most of my homework at the kitchen table, at the dining room table. And I had a younger sister and she was a cheerleader and she was loud and she had loud friends and we had animals. And, you know, it was just, it, it wasn't conducive to learning. When I got to college, I found out that weirdly enough, when I would go to study groups and, you know, we'd get together in somebody's dorm and, uh, there, there'd be like 10 people in a dorm. Uh, I did not learn well laying down. So I, my brain, for whatever reason, doesn't retain information as well. If I'm, you know, if I'm laying down on my stomach reading a book or if I'm laying down taking notes this way or whatever, if I'm laying on my side, well, I, for whatever reason, I, I just don't, don't retain information as well that way. And I didn't figure that stuff out until I started messing stuff up. Um, so I just want you to kind of think about some of this stuff and, and be intentional. Don't just accidentally be in, in the right place or accidentally be in the wrong place and be stressed out because your three-year-old sibling just keeps running in and asking you five million questions. Not that that has happened to me as I'm e-learning with my three-year-old. It's happened a lot. Um, so uh, let, let's just kind of dive in and, and look at things that I want you to consider. So in an ideal world, you see kind of right there in the middle of the screen, um, you know, think about how well you can concentrate. Think about in school when, when you can concentrate and when you get annoyed with your classmates for distracting you. You know, typically when you can focus, it's quiet. You're not distracted. Um, you're comfortable. And, and lighting, people vary on lighting. You know, some of the places that, that I studied in college where I got the, I felt I did the best, uh, were in libraries that were not, not well lit, but not poorly lit either for, you know, I don't know if it's sensory overload with, you know, bright lights or, you know, whatever, but dim light worked better for me. Again, just, just be intentional. Um, then down here, uh, think about what does quiet mean for you? Uh, I had a friend that had ESPN in the background always. Um, he slept with ESPN on in the background. So that background noise helped his brain kind of regulate. Uh, personally, I get super distracted uh, with background noise. I can't have the TV on if I'm studying. I, I just, I, I, I need my brain to focus. Uh, like I said, think about sitting down, lying down. Uh, you probably will be sitting down for the test, hopefully. Um, and then think about the lighting. Um, so then notice here, they say, once you decide upon your needs, claim your territory, set up your study area ahead of time. There was an awkward pause there. My son was sirening out there and I had to, <laughs> had to silence the siren. Um, so I, I think I left off at claim your territory. Um, you know, set up your study area ahead of time. Don't be rushing into the test and, oh, where's my pencil? Where's my scrap paper? Where's all my, uh, how do I get signed in? You, you know, there's probably going to be some tech issues and, and, you know, some, something is going to go wrong. So the more prepared you can be with just your, your crap, the better off you'll be. Think about when, when you're getting ready to leave the house and, and you can't find your keys. Like if you just had your keys, the whole process would go so much easier. If you could just find the silly stuff, the whole process is easier. So, uh, I'm going to come back to this down near the bottom, but think about whatever you might need. You know, if, if that's a backup pencil, backup pen, uh, if that's, erasers, if that's scrap paper, if that's a dry erase board, think about what you need to take your test and make sure it's there. You don't want to burn three minutes running around looking for a stapler. I don't know why you would need a stapler, but, um, you know, you don't want to waste any of your test time gathering materials. Um, so that, that's, that's pretty much what, what this area says here on the website. Um, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because students, hate it for some reason and it really upsets students uh this isn't remember i'm not talking about when you're hanging out with your friends when you're hanging out with your girlfriend when you're relaxing i'm talking about making your brain work better 
what the cognitive science shows is that there is a rhythm that helps your brain retain information. If you listen to music at about 60 beats per minute, then your brain operates on a higher level. Your brain stores more information. So think about the kind of music you hear in libraries. You don't hear hip hop or rock or anything that, that's, that's backbeat or frontbeat or anything like that that's got a 60 beats per minute I'm not a professional musician or anything like that, but that's one beat per second. That's, that's a pretty slow beat for most popular music. Even, even country music is higher than, than 60 beats per minute, typically. So if you're trying to make your brain work better, you should listen to something that has uh, a rhythm of about 60 beats per, beats per minute, so classical music. Um, like it says on the screen here, pop music, uh, typically popular music, so they're saying like modern music, uh, tends to have a rhythm of 100 to 140 beats per minute. So that's that sensory input is overloading your brain and you're in, you know, you're taking information in here. You've got all these beats going here. You've got light coming here. You've got your sister pestering you over here and your brain just can't, you just can't take it. You're, you're, you're on overload. So when you start eliminating some of these stressors and you bring the light down and you, you drop the beats down to where your brain's feeling regulated, you got your headphones on so you can't hear your little sister and you start eliminating these distractors and now your brain starts to be able to function better. So I don't know why that upsets so many students. So many students get like angry and they're like, no, I need my headphones to study. Maybe, maybe that's not what the cognitive research says. But do you know that you need your headphones or is that just what you've always done? Is that just something you've accidentally stumbled into or are you doing it on purpose? And may, maybe this doesn't apply to you. Maybe, maybe that's not, not you. Um, but again, I'm just trying to get you to think about when does your brain work the best and how can we make our testing environment match that? You're, you're not going to be in your perfect environment. You're at home. There's... 10 million things around you. I'm constantly distracted. So what I'm trying to get at here is how can we, how can we be efficient and how can we eliminate distractions so that we can focus and take advantage of this opportunity. So I hope some of this sparked something in your head. Take some time today, set up your study area, set up your, your test taking spot, maybe do a practice run, make sure you're comfortable, make sure you can sit there for 45 minutes, make sure you can grind, make, just, just be ready. And then tomorrow, let's just show up and dominate. And, and honestly, I can't wait to see the results. You guys have worked so hard for me all year. Uh, and I really, really appreciate everything. Every day hasn't been sunshine and roses, but that's, that's life. And uh, like I said, I really appreciate all the hard work that you guys have put in. And I can't wait to see the results and, and see it all pay off for you guys tomorrow. So good luck. Let me know if you need anything. And I will talk with you soon.